So unfortunately, I can't really provide for you a proper sound bite of how this exhaust sounds. I've been through countless of videos on YouTube just to see if I could get an idea of how it sounds, right? But my cold start right now on M1 mode, which I program my M1 mode to have, uh, you know, Sport Plus on everything. Uh, so the valves were open, the engine is a lot more aggressive. Um, it's very loud, I'll tell you this, it's very loud. It's, it's exactly what I was looking for. And to get me to this process, it took me some time. These are the resonators that come stock on the GD2. They're pretty hefty. You have a little one and you have a fat one. And if you look inside of it, there's a lot that goes in it that's very much to suppress the sound of our cars. So yes, something that I would highly recommend that you remove. Um, these resonators are heavy, they're very beefy. And again, there's a lot of suppression in our cars. So when I first installed the axle back, which is a Daler axle back, thank you, Keys Sports. Um, it, it was good. There was a little bit of a difference. There's more tone, more presence. In fact, when I started it and it was warming up the cats, it, it felt more presence and way more than the a stock M exhaust that comes with the G80s. And it was cool. I was excited. But then when I drove off, um, it did give me more tone and presence with the high RPMs. But on cruising speed, it was exactly the same as my M exhaust. I'm being really honest. And I'm very particular. I, I, I want loudness, but controlled loudness. So what I did is I basically started experimenting with it and I asked my local mofo shop, what would happen if I remove both resonators? Default, if you remove the axle back, you got a couple of options, right? Most exhaust suites delete the resonators and the two cats um, before you get into the engine side of the components where you see the other two catalytic converters. These G80s come with four cats, two resonators, and then you have the axle bag. So there's a lot of suppression of sound already. After a lot of dialogue and advice seeking from other people in my muffler shop, the route that I decided to go through was, well, first I got an upgrade on the axle bag, which is from Daler, and then I removed both resonators and just put in the same size piping on those resonators. Still kept all four cats, and I gotta tell you, I'm excited for this. It burbles, it pops, it's it's loud, it's very raspy at the high RPMs, which is what I wanted, and I did not want to be quiet out on the track when I take this out in October or November. So the sound is there, the, the 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 raspiness is there, the presence is there, the aggressiveness is there. I get the cracks and pops without a tune. So definitely something worth to explore. Um, I would say that if you were to just chop off your resonators on your G80, there may not be any controlness because I, I don't know, there's something about re upgrading your axle back to something more or less of a suppression to really make up for the lack of resonators that you don't have. In fact, I think this combo with this Daler exhaust and without my resonators, I don't have any droning in the car. It's very peculiar because when I deleted my resonators on my 440 and my 320i, there was horrible droning in the car. When I removed the resonators from my JD2, paired with the Daler axle bag, there was zero droning in the car, which my wife is pretty happy about because, yeah, my 320i, my 440s just made us kind of nauseous, give us headaches because 
the Giovanni was just unbearable. So totally recommend it. Um, something that I think it's worth exploring with your G80s, but something to be mindful of is a lot of suppression in these cars. So take that into consideration when you purchase your axle back or your exhaust suite. In the case Motorsports was sending me over this exhaust. Uh, it looks great. It's aggressive. Uh, huge shout out to my brother-in-law for helping me out to install it. And um, I will say, Installing it was pretty simple. You just got to make sure that you cover up all the leaks and then you install the valve actuators properly. But besides that, that's it for the video, guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.